To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. So, my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed about the first and foremost biogeochemical cycle. That's about the carbon cycle. Now, we are going to discuss about the second type of biogeochemical cycle. Now, this second type is the nitrogen cycle, right? So, this is the second main uh, chemical cycle that we can observe in the environment or in our biosphere, right? So, here, now you are given with the topic nitrogen cycle. The main source of nitrogen of earth is the atmosphere. The fixation of atmospheric nitrogen takes place in three main methods. So main source of nitrogen of the earth is atmosphere. You know that our atmosphere contains about 70% of nitrogen gas. So main source of nitrogen is the atmosphere, atmosphere of our earth. The fixation of atmospheric nitrogen takes place in three main methods. So according to three methods, the nitrogen is going to fix within our environment which is being absorbed by the uh, atmosphere. Okay. So nitrogen which is absorbed by the atmosphere is being fixed mainly by using three methods. Okay. So first method is given the biological fixation. Biological fixation. Free living bacteria in soil who is named as the Acetobacter and symbiotic bacteria like rhizobium live inside the root nodules of leguminous plants. They can convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium ions, right? Ammonium ions. You know that ammonium ions are referred to as NH4, NH4 plus ammonium ions. So here it is given the first and foremost fixation type means that the first and foremost conversion type of atmospheric nitrogen into normal nitrogen compounds. First thing is given then biological fixation. Here it is given free living bacteria in soil. There are free living bacteria in our soil which is called as the Acetobacter and symbiotic bacteria like rhizobium. So rhizobium is a symbiotic bacteria. That means my dear children, it is creating a certain kind of a structure within plants, right? Especially in root nodules, right? These things are referred to as real root nodules, especially. So these things are being uh, converted, uh, the, these uh, organisms, so these rhizobium bacteria can convert uh, these ammo uh, nitrogen into ammonium compounds, okay? Ammonium compounds. I think you have heard about the rhizobium previously. So rhizobium is uh, uh, studied in grade 7 and also in grade 8 my dear children when we are studying about the microorganisms. Okay. So especially in grade 7 my dear children when we are discussing about the properties of uh, special, special properties of uh, roots. We discussed about the roots with root nodules. Over there we discussed about the ry rhizobium. Okay. Now here Rhizobium can be identified in leguminous plants, roots in leguminous plants like mimosa plant. So you have, I think you have learned about the leguminous plants my dear children and also about the uh, mimosa. So within the roots of mimosa plant, you can identify, right, without the root, without, uh, with the roots, uh, with the roots of or in the roots of uh, mimosa plants, right, we can identify these root nodules. Those are like a small bit of circular structures, right, which are present within the roots. So these structures contain, right, or these uh, uh, areas contain a special kind of bacteria referred to as rhizobium. Rhizobium has the ability to absorb nitrogen from the atmosphere and to convert these things into ammonium compounds, ammonium compounds. So here it is given. Rhizobium live inside the root nodules of leguminous plants that can convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium compounds or ammonium ions. Okay. So there are two types of bacteria which helps in the biological fixation. These things are referred to as biological fixation because my dear children, 
the biological organisms or living organisms help in fixation of these nitrogen so free living bacteria in soil acerobacter and the other one is symbiotic bacteria like rhizobium right then my dear children the second main type the atmospheric fixation atmospheric fixation okay that means within the atmosphere so i'll underline the pre, uh, next uh, the previous one the other type of bacteria rhizobium okay rhizobium live inside the root nodules so within biological fixation two types of bacteria helps to convert nitrogen gas into ammonium compounds okay one is acerobacter the other is rhizobium both these things convert nitrogen into ammonium compounds then next one given atmospheric fixation atmospheric fixation so in here atmospheric fixation it is given during lightning atmospheric nitrogen is converted to nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide so during lightning my dear children atmospheric nitrogen is going to react with oxygen okay with the help of the immense energy given out by the lightning right uh, atmospheric nitrogen reacts with oxygen to create nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide these two are the ones which are getting created okay nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide is getting created uh, when lightning is going to occur within our environment okay so here during the lightning atmospheric nitrogen is converted to nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide with the help of light energy in lightning okay so here nitrogen gas is going to react with oxygen gas to form these substances then my dear children industrial fixation so we studied about the biological fixation then the second one atmospheric fixation then the third one this is industrial fixation so here it is given atmospheric nitrogen converts to nitrate during industrial production of chemical fertilizers so atmospheric nitrogen converts to nitrate nitrates no3 minus right so we can create atmospheric nitrogen in uh, we can convert these atmospheric nitrogen into no3 minus ions right with the help of industrial production of chemical fertilizer so during the production of industrial fertilizer right here the nitrogen is getting converted into no3 minus which is nitrate ions nitrifying bacteria like nitrosomonas first convert ammonium compounds into nitrite nitrite my dear children uh, nitrite and then nitrobacter bacteria convert nitrite into nitrate nitrite into nitrate right nitrite into nitrate so first of all nitrifying bacteria nitrifying bacteria like nitrosomonas convert ammonium compounds into nitrites first of all nitrosomonas converts ammonium compounds into nitrites nitrites then my dear children nitrobacter bacteria convert nitrite to nitrate okay nitrobacter bacteria converts nitrite into nitrates so this happen this is going to happen under two main steps my dear children first one atmospheric nitrogen converts to nitrate during industrial production of chemical fertilizers the nitrifying bacteria like nitrosomonas convert ammonium compounds into nitrites and nitrobacters are converting these things once again into nitrates nitrates so nitrites into nitrates okay then these nitrates are absorbed by plants and used to synthesize proteins these plant proteins pass into animals through food chains so nitrates are absorbed by plants and used to synthesize proteins so there are nitrates my dear children and these are absorbed by plants and used to synthesize proteins these are used to synthesize proteins okay 
the, these plant proteins pass into animals through food chains. You know that protein to create protein, nitrogen is a quite essential element. Without nitrogen, we won't be able to produce protein. So to create protein, nitrogen is very important. So this nitrogen then, right, absorbed by the plants is getting converted into proteins. Okay. Then my dear children, this protein is passed to the animals along the food chains because you know that when we are going to plant, eat plant, we receive proteins, okay, which are being produced by the plants, right. So these nitrates are absorbed by plants and used to synthesize proteins. So therefore plant proteins pass into animals through the food chains. Due to microbial activity on dead bodies of organisms, due to microbial activity on dead bodies of organisms, the nitrogenous compounds convert to ammonium compounds known as ammonification and collect into soil. So due to microbial activity on dead bodies of organisms, my dear children, the nitrogenous compounds convert to ammonium compounds known as ammonification and collect into the soil. Now the next next step is you know that our bodies contain several protein molecules so when our bodies are getting decomposed through the biodegradation process microorganisms come and going to act on our bodies so because of that what will happen my dear children the nitrogen components contained within our body is getting converted into ammonium compounds here okay this is getting converted into ammonium compounds so this um, conversion of body, uh, conversion of particles contained in, in our body, conversion of protein compounds, okay, or else nitrogen compounds in our body, right, into ammonium compounds is known as, my dear children, the ammonification, ammonification. Then what will happen? These compounds then collect into the soil, okay. These compounds are getting collected into our soil through the biodegradation process. So here also you can observe that microorganisms are the ones which are going to help mainly during the decomposition process. So therefore different kinds of microorganisms are the ones which are getting helpful in decomposing bodies of the dead, dead organisms. Okay. Right. Then. The denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas and Theobacillus convert nitrates back to atmospheric nitrogen. Uh, now, the process of releasing these compounds once again to nitrogen. Okay, so this process is once again carried out by microorganisms. So, who are the types of microorganisms? The denitrifying bacteria, right? Denitrifying bacteria. These are the type of microorganisms that helps in converting these nitrates back into atmospheric nitrogen. Okay, here denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas and Theobacillus convert the nitrates back into atmospheric nitrogen and being released to the environment okay now see the pattern atmospheric nitrogen convert into nitrate during industrial production of chemical fertilizer so these nitrifying bacteria like nitrosomonas convert ammonium compounds nitrites then nitrobacter converts into nitrates okay so these nitrates are being once again utilized by denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas and Theobacillus and once again they convert these things into atmospheric nitrogen. Other than that my dear children, these nitrates which are absorbed by plants is used to produce proteins in our proteins in their bodies. So when we consume these things right we also receive these proteins within proteins my dear children within proteins contain our body uh, proteins contain nitrogen gas nitrogen as a main element so when we die decomposers decomposers means microorganisms 
these guys once again come and biodegrade our bodies. In that process, once again ammonium compounds are added to the environment or to the soil. So my dear children, what will happen? So this is also referred to as ammonification, right? So once again like denitrifying bacteria helps to convert these things into night atmospheric nitrogen. So this is how the process works. As you can see here, it keep getting converted into nitrite, nitrate, ammonium and nitrogen. And this is moving as a cycle, right? It's keep rotating as a cycle. So therefore, my dear children, this is also a biogeochemical cycle. So this is the nitrogen fixation, the three methods of nitrogen fixation that we can observe in our environment. So once again, let's head on to see the three types of nitrogen fixation. First, the biological fixation here, Acetobacter and uh, Rhizobium live, uh, living inside the uh, environment convert nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium ions. Then ammonium ions once again been utilized by different kinds of organisms like plants and animals. Okay, so then the next one is atmospheric fixation here during the lightning process. Uh, atmospheric nitrogen is converted to nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide atmospheric fixation. Then the third and the final one here the industrial fixation here the nitrifying bacteria like nitrosomonas first convert that ammonium compounds into nitrites and then nitrobacter converts to nitrate. Then my dear children nitrates are absorbed by plants to synthesize proteins these plant proteins pass into animal by animal through the food chains. Okay. Then due to microbial activity on dead bodies of organisms, the nitrogenous compounds convert into ammonium compounds. And this is known as ammonification, my dear children. And these things are getting collected into the soil once more. Then finally, what will happen? Denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas and Theobacillus convert these nitrates into atmospheric nitrogen once more and release to the environment or to the atmosphere once again. So the, here this is the nitrogen cycle which circulates according to several methods according to three main methods. Biological fixation, atmospheric fixa fixation and the industrial fixation. Right then. So you are given with the diagram in order to show the nitrogen cycle. So atmospheric nitrogen by the atmospheric fixation it is gain, getting uh, converted into different kinds of nitrogen oxides of nitrogen then by the industrial processors my dear children fertilizer is being made and this fertilizer right is getting converted into ni uh, nitrate ions then this is nitrite ion no3 minus no2 minus no3 minus is nitrate i will mention that one this is nitrate NO3 minus is nitrate. This is nitrite. This is ammonium. Right? This is ammonium. So ammonium, nitrites, nitrates, okay. So this is how the circulation works then. So this is the circulation works my dear children. This is how the way or oh, this is the way of circulation of nitrogen gas in our atmosphere, the nitrogen element in our atmosphere. Not only the atmosphere, but it also travels in, along the lithosphere and also from the hydrosphere. So therefore, we can refer this thing as the biosphere. Okay. So the circulation of nitrogen within our biosphere can be given like this. So this is the nitrogen cycle, the second most important cycle of all. Okay. So the first one we studied, second, uh, second. Uh, the, the first biogeochemical cycle which we studied is the carbon cycle, the first and foremost one. This is the second one, my dear children, second biogeochemical cycle. This is the nitrogen cycle then. Now we are going to move on with the lesson to study further things related. Now here you are given with an assignment. Prepare a creative exhibit 
exit with board to display the nitrogen no carbon cycle uh, now at your home you need to prepare an exhibit to represent nitrogen cycle or the carbon cycle in your environment okay right so you know we have identified the two main cycles in our environment nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle so you have to draw or else you have to prepare a schematic diagram or else a structure to show the nitrogen cycle or else the carbon cycle in our environment okay so it's very important to do these assignments my dear children by that way you will get or you will replenish your knowledge right so at your school you try to do these things with your uh, friends or else by, uh, by your own you can do it at your home as well right even you can get the help of your elders in order to do these things right so it's important to do these things these assignments these things by doing these things my dear children you can get even more knowledge related to the lesson parts right then so this is the assignment so let's head on to see the next thing then next one given environment this is a fresh new topic my dear children now we have studied about the uh, balance between all the processes which keeps the balance in our environment right we studied about the mechanisms which helps to keep the balance in our environment so we have studied all of those processes now it's time to discuss a fresh new topic related to the lesson my dear children here we are going to discuss about the different environment environmental pollutants and their effects so here mainly we are going to focus about the environment pollution how does the environment pollution is going to happen and my dear children what are the different kinds of environment pollutants okay this is the one which you are going to study right now okay so you here you are given with the topic the different environmental pollutants and their effects so not only the environmental pollutants my dear children we are going to study about what their effects as well after the addition of these substances to our environment right you know that environment is get polluted so because of that environment pollution what kind of an effect is going to happen for the organisms living in our biosphere okay we'll be studying about these things as well so here you are given with a point disposal of different effluents by the rapid growing population affects the environment balance let us discuss about the effects of these waste materials so the main reason behind the removal of these substances to the environment is the rapid growth of population you know that our human population is in the exponential phase right now so there is a rapid growth in our population so with the rapid growth of population my dear children the waste materials which is being removed to the environment is also going to increase this uh, case in here is that there are certain substances which are very much harmful to the environment so when releasing these substances to the environment different ill effects are going to happen right not only for the environment but also for ourselves as well because we are the ones who are living in our environment okay within environment we are the ones or within biosphere we are the ones who are living right not us but also other anim other, other types of animals as well but however me are, we are the ones all oh, right the humans are the ones who are mainly responsible in removing these waste materials so because of that all of us has to face the consequences right so we'll be identifying what are the ill effects or what are the consequences of these the pollutants environmental uh, environment pollutions or environmental pollutants which are being added to the environment by us okay so we'll be discussing about the consequences or the effects caused by these environmental pollutants okay so first and foremost you are given with a subtopic about the environment pollution so i told you about several things related to the environment pollution environment pollution environmental pollution pollutants pollutants so you have heard about the you have heard about this term pretty much often right now but however you don't know what is the actual meaning of the so the actual meaning of the term is given in here right now let's see what is that disposal of different effluents by the rapid growth in population affects the environmental balance so we are going to discuss about the effects of these waste materials so actually what is this environment pollution my dear children you know that environment we use our environment to survive okay 
by the disposal of different waste materials and effluents the environment is not becoming right or oh, environment will uh, is not becoming a consumable or else uh, it will not be a living environment or else it will convert into other different kinds of you know toxic environments so in that case we won't be able to survive in it so such a process is the one which is referred as the environment pollution the environment that we are going to consume or the biosphere that we are consuming right now the resources of the biosphere that we are consuming right now is going to disappear from time to time or from uh, one period to another period it's mainly because of the different kinds of pollutants and irritants that we are going to add to the soil and to our biosphere so because of that my dear children what will have a what will happen our environment or our biosphere will not be able to survive okay the favorable conditions for the survival of organisms will not be uh, will not be available uh, further so in that case what we have to do is we have to face different consequences so there are there are three kinds of you know that there are three kinds of there are three types of pollution methods when you consider the environment you know that our living environment can be divided into three main categories the soil water and air so in our environment pollution thing we'll be discussing about soil pollution right soil pollution then the water pollution and as well as we'll be discussing about the air pollution too so all of these three categories are discussed in detail within the lesson part environment pollution right okay then so we are going to discuss about the factors affecting the environmental pollution right now let's see you are given with an assignment over here an activity materials required different waste materials found in the environment different types of waste materials that can be found in the environment make a list of pollutants found in the school premises after a field trip classify them according to the methods given below decomposing matter non decomposing matter so what you have to do first right first method you have to go to the outer environment of your school then you have to find out or investigate several waste materials which are added to the environment which have been added to the environment and you have to classify these things into decomposing ones and non decomposable ones okay decomposing ones and the ones which are not getting decomposed you have to prepare a list of these things okay you have to prepare a list of these things then then let's see what you have to do method 2 if you have if you are asked to place different waste disposal bins in your school premises decide what type of bins to be placed mostly after analyzing the amount of different waste materials so if you ask to place different waste disposal bins in your school premises now if you have been asked to keep different what different waste disposal bins in your school premises then my dear children decide what type of bins to be placed mostly after the analyzing the amount of uh, waste materials right different waste materials so that means my dear children we have to take these waste materials and we have to analyze and you have to uh, keep different kinds of bins or else baskets to add these waste materials you have to classify these things like this see disposed food polythene and plastic metallic substances paper and cardboard glass and porcelain then electronic materials so this is the second method if you are asked to place different waste disposal bins in your school premises decide what type of bins to be placed mostly after analyzing the amount of different waste materials actually by analyzing these different kinds of waste materials will be able to do, apply these kinds of bins okay so by doing this activity my dear children you can come into a conclusion that we had different kinds of effluents and different kinds of waste materials to the environment like what like disposed food polythene and plastic 
metallic substances paper and cardboard glass and porcelain items electronic materials like waste computers and etc okay yeah different kinds of substances to the environment so by doing this activity my dear children definitely you can come into a conclusion or you can find out the factors or the substances that affects the environment pollution okay so here let's see now we are going to investigate right we uh, we discuss how to do the activity so you go ahead and find uh, do that thing so actually it's very simple even we know that these things are available in our environment but however in order to get a uh, good idea about the things you have you have given the previous activity my dear children okay now i'm going to explain what are the special kind of kinds of things or what are the special kinds of pollutants that we add to the environment so here it is given there are different types of waste materials involved in environmental pollution we have to be aware of them to reduce their usage so it's very important to reduce the usage of these substances right very important to reduce the wastage right or removal of these substances to the environment so like we did like we discussed in the activity my dear children there can be different kinds of substances which are added by the human beings to the environment right by own purpose or not so these are different types of wastes agrochemical waste number one is agrochemical waste second one given industrial waste the industrial waste next one greenhouse gases different types of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide okay by the burning of fossil fuel i think we have studied that one earlier next one heavy metals heavy metals are the ones which has a high density my dear children metals that has a very high density metals which has a heavy mass regarding the or when you compare with the other metals those kinds of metals are referred to as heavy metals okay then heavy metals so heavy metals are the ones which has the higher density my dear children higher density means in here especially they have a very greater mass compared to the other types of metals so we'll be discussing about the ill effects of those heavy metals as well in detail we'll be discussing like what will happen if uh, these heavy metals are being added to the environment okay next one given after that the particulate matter particulate matter means my dear children different kinds of particles which can be added to the environment right different kinds of particles which are added to the environment so you know that there are different kinds of plastics and different kinds of polythene and like or you know like different kinds of polymer types which are being prepared artificially by the human beings so these things are can be microscopic or even macroscopic no matter the macro microscopic nature or oh, each and everything are made up with particles no so there is a huge probability of adding these particles into our environment okay so these can be cloth regi form polythene or else plastic and uh, fibers sometimes uh, you know like uh, substances other substances like even uh, rubber like vulcanized rubber right can also be added to the environment you know that vulcanized rubber is also a type of a polymer okay right then then my dear children will be discussing about the domestic waste different kinds of domestic waste so domestic waste are the waste types that we dispose to the environment in a by our domestic use that means the waste food fecal materials of organisms that means humans and other types of uh, animals that we uh, you know breed in our environments okay you know that there are different kinds of farms and these farms are going to breed different kinds of animals so these animals are going to remove several fecal materials to the environment so those things can also be considered as domestic waste substances then other than that different kinds of clothes polythene and plastic and other polymers so my dear children these things are also considered as domestic wastes okay other than that other than those main uh, types my dear children we can even observe 
different kinds of cleaning agents right different kinds of soap and shampoo and other kinds of cleaning agents which are being added to the uh, environment by the human beings these things can also be taken as domestic waste okay simply domestic waste means the substances that we use in our day to day life in our houses mainly okay and which are been disposed to the environment right then then my dear children el electronic waste electronic waste different kinds of machines right especially different kinds of electronic machines are going to release different kinds of electronic waste to the environment it can be pcb right pcb boards we'll be discussing about pcb in detail when we are going forward with the lesson part okay that means pcb boards means in simple circuit boards okay circuit boards then my dear children uh you know other than that there can be different kinds of uh, electronic items which are being discarded to the environment so by that way different kinds of heavy metals are being released to the environment you know that to make diodes and leds we use arsenic arsenic is a very poisonous substance so when we dispose these things without any uh, without any you know like there should be a control so without any control if you are going to release these things to the environment then what will happen then my dear children all the heavy metals and all the junk which are getting collected on the soil will get collected into different kinds of water sources and other places and in by doing that so the environment plus all the other components in the environment will get polluted and that effect is also uh, being given to us as well right then the next one is the nuclear waste you already know what do you mean by the nuclear waste right so nuclear waste means by nuclear weapons or by nuclear reactors like in nuclear power plants different kinds of nuclear materials or nuclear waste are being removed okay so this nuclear waste is also a type of a waste which been added to the environment it is also a waste which has been added to the environment by the people so nuclear nuclear waste has a high radioactive nature radioactive nature means this contains lethal waves like gamma rays and x rays okay so these gamma rays and x rays will uh, will destroy the dna structures of organisms and mutated structures are being created so that is harmful to the environment so these are the substances that we can observe as the types of waste that we added to the environment okay my dear children so these are the types of waste which we add to the environment more all of these waste are being added by mainly from human beings okay 90 to 95 percent of this amount uh, the, of the substances are being added to the environment by the human beings and like when you take the greenhouse gases there is a certain possibility that the natural there is a natural way of creating greenhouse gases as well like the decomposition decomposition process of the organisms during that process my dear children methane is given out so methane is a greenhouse gas so uh, other than that the agrochemicals industrial waste heavy metals then particulate matter domestic waste electronic waste and nuclear waste right most of these things are being added to the environment by human population okay so these are the ones main Uh, different types of chemicals and the waste substances that we are about to discuss under the environment pollution pollutant and uh, under the environmental pollutants okay right then so let's head on to see the first and foremost type of pollutant this is the excessive usage of agrochemicals so here we are going to discuss about the agrochemical waste okay agrochemical waste you know that A waste means if you use excessively, then it is getting wasted. So waste are getting created because of the excessive use. So agrochemicals are also added to the soil because of the excessive use. So here we are going to discuss about the excessive usage of agrochemicals. So you are given with a point: artificially synthesized chemicals for agricultural practices 
are called agrochemicals we know that thing right we know that thing for sure without any trouble we know that uh, we know about the definition for agrochemicals my dear children for the commercial agricultural purposes artificially synthesized special kinds of chemical substances are to are referred to as agrochemicals so these agrochemicals will enhance the harvest sometimes it will kill different kinds of pests in the environment okay and also in order to grow the plant as fertilizer these are being added okay however these are these things are synthetically made my dear children that means these things are artificial okay then mainly agrochemicals include chemical fertilizers weedicides insecticides and fungicides they are used to get short term benefits but they cause many ill effects on the environment and hazards to health so mainly agrochemicals include chemical fertilizers weedicides and insecticides and fungicides so like i said my dear children mainly agrochemicals will enhance the growth that means act as a fertilizer or else it will destroy different kinds of organisms like pest organisms okay which that harms the crop so these pests can be weedicide weeds weeds means different kinds of uh, you know other kinds of uh, plants that grow around the crop that will harm or that will absorb the favorable conditions okay so weeds then after that my dear children insects and also different kinds of microorganisms like fungi so fungicide weedicide and insecticide collectively are the ones which are referred to as pesticides okay collectively these three types are referred to as pesticides so as pesticides we had agrochemicals or else as fertilizer we had agrochemicals they are used to get short term benefits the other thing is that we had these things to get short term benefits that means to enhance the harvest in order to protect the harvest from insects and other types of uh, weeds and funguses right so like that way to get short term benefits we add these substances to the environment or we add agrochemicals to the environment next one but they cause many ill effects to the environment and hazards to health however these substances are very hazardous to the environment and the other thing is that my dear children not only the environment when these things are when these things are hazardous to the environment in the other cases those things also give different kinds of health issues to the people as well okay different kinds of health issues to the people so these agrochemicals are not uh, not 100% safe to cons uh, use okay then we decides insecticides and fungicides are commonly known as pesticides so like i said all of these weedicides insects insecticides and fungicides are referred to as weedicides weedicides uh, are referred to as pesticides okay all the weedicides insecticides and fungicides are commonly known as pesticides pest okay pest is a harmful organism to a certain crop or else to a certain agricultural land so pesticides commonly these substances are referred to as pesticides so the the dose of a pesticide required to kill 50% of a population of a particular pest species is defined as lethal dose ld50 then my dear children the other thing we add these things in order to destroy harmful organisms in the environment okay when you take a certain population of these organisms in order to kill 50% of those organisms 50% of those organisms in order to kill 50% of those organisms there should be a certain amount of chemical substance that should be added chemical pesticide that should be added to the environment there should be a certain amount of it 
so we have to add that amount in order to destroy at least 50 percent of the population harmful population okay this is referred as my dear children the lethal dose lethal dose okay ld50 so by uh, to destroy 50 percent of a certain pest species right the dose or the amount of uh, chemical that should be added to the environment is referred to as the lethal dose lethal dose then you are given with an assignment what is the assignment let's see list out the agrochemicals that are used for a specific crop from its planting to harvesting avoid touching those agrochemicals so what you have to do is you have to list out the agrochemicals that are used for a specific crop from its planting to harvesting. So I'll let you know one certain um, sorry, one certain type of substance, a chemical fertilizer added to coconut plant, that is urea. A type of chemical substance added to the coconut plant is urea. In coconut plantation, we add urea to coconut plants. Just one type. Huh? So uh, like that way you have to find out other different kinds of chemical substances which are being added to agricultural purposes okay starting from starting from smaller plants to larger ones okay starting from smaller plants to larger ones find out the details my dear children by that way you will get to know what are the types of chemicals which are being added to the agricultural lands okay so like i said my dear children previously there can be different kinds of uh, chemical ag uh, chemical substances agricultural chemical substances these th these things fall into the two main categories as pesticides and fertilizer okay so find out both of those things which are being added starting from the childhood age to the older age of a plant or else a crop so i hope that you will follow up the assignment and you will do it in your Oh, my dear children right then the gasset announcement issued right the gasset announcement issued in 23rd of December so there was a gasset announcement which was issued in 23rd of December my dear children 2014 year 2014 by the government has banned selling and usage of chemicals so there are different kinds of uh, different kinds of chemicals so in during the 2014 the gasset announcement given out on 23rd of december different kinds of chemicals were banned in selling and also using so these things are glyphosate right glyphosate type of a fertilizer glyphosate then propanil right propanil propanil then carbile carbile then chlorophyllos right chlorophyllos next one carbofuran right carbofuran so these substances these chemicals have been uh, you know like expelled right or else the it, uh, the selling of these substances or selling of these chemical substances have been prohibited within the sri lanka so this uh, this thing was implemented in 23rd of december 2014 especially they have prohibited the usage and selling of these substances right because my dear children now there should be a reason of prohibiting these things now so what is the reason next reason is my dear children their toxicity and the excessive usage of these substances will cause adverse environmental effects that is the main reason in banning these things so you are given with a figure as you can see here different kinds of chemical substances sold at the market so i like several kinds with different 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 kinds of uh, market names or uh, we can identify these agrochemicals and fertilizers my dear children okay so this is the first and foremost uh, the waste material which is the chemical substances or agrochemicals 
right then next one discharge of industrial effluents to the environment industrial effluents so industrial effluents means here by uh, certain different kinds of industries the types of waste materials which are added to the environment industrial effluents so here given the waste materials that discharge after the production process which cannot be used again are called as industrial waste the discharge of these industrial waste to the environment causes harmful impacts on the environment industrial waste are as follows so the waste materials discharge after the production process which cannot be used again so these things cannot be used again that is why these things are discharged right so waste materials that discharge after the production process which cannot be used again are called to as industrial waste these things are called as industrial waste the discharge of these industrial waste to the environment causes harmful impacts on the environment so these things will cause harmful uh, things to the environment industrial waste are as follows so now we are going to discuss about these kinds of industrial waste which are being added to the environment remember this industrial waste are cannot be reused okay that's why these things are being expelled to the environment okay right so first one given hydrocarbons types of hydrocarbons which uh, are considered as waste materials are being added to the environment from the industries so we'll be discussing about the hydrocarbons to first so you are given a point the compounds formed by combination of carbon and hydrogen only in different ratio are called as hydrocarbons we studied this thing in the previous chapter my dear children or in the 14th lesson in the 14th lesson we studied about the hydrocarbons and we mentioned that the hydrocarbons are the ones which has carbon and hydrogen to a certain ratio according to the amount of carbon and according to the hydrogen there are different kinds of hydrocarbons like alkanes alkenes and alkynes so these hydrocarbons are being added as main waste material to the environment by the industrial processes okay so methods of releasing hydrocarbons to the environment now we are going to discuss how the hydro hydrocarbons are being added to the environment so here you are given release of methane or else ch4 methane the simplest hydrocarbon you know that methane is the simplest hydrocarbon okay so release of methane ch4 right due to bacterial activity on garbage and dead plant and animal matter in marshy lands so in marshy lands my dear children there are plenty of microorganisms and other types of algae and other type of kinds of different different kinds of organisms so uh, in marshy lands these microorganisms are going to feed on another kinds of microorganisms so in that case what will happen different kinds of gases are going to expel to the environment the main gas which is getting expelled to the environment during the decomposition process is the methane gas so this methane gas has a very bitter smell okay that means my dear children it has a very you know like a pungent smell so therefore upon releasing methane a terrible odor would given out okay a terrible order would given so that means my dear children uh, in marshy lands and in during the decomposition of bodies of organisms uh, main ga main uh, gas or the methane is given out but here the specialty is that the release of methane simplest hydrocarbon due to bacterial activity on garbage and dead plant and animal matter in marshy lands so garbage you know that garbage is added by the human beings so because of garbage different kinds of right gases are being added to the environment bone decomposition the main gas which is added is the methane okay so hydrocarbons are added to the environment as the form of methane with the help of decomposition of garbage and other animal bodies then the next one during usage of liquid petroleum lp gas petrol diesel kerosene as fuel that are obtained by fractional distillation of right crude oil 
so during usage of petroleum that means lp gas petrol diesel kerosene as fuels that are obtained by fractional distillation of crude oil so you know that crude oil we receive crude oil from the soil this crude oil contains different kinds of hydrocarbons actually it is a collection of hydrocarbons so through the fractional distillation we remove these hydrocarbons and we utilize these things so over there also there is a possibility to add or release these kinds of hydrocarbons to the environment right then the next one given during usage of lubrication oil and grease which are products of fractional distillation of crude oil so these things are produced by the fractional distillation of crude oil and my dear children when using these substances like oil and grease and other products what will happen in that case also right these substances are being added to the environment so as you can see i have given you two figures over here the first and foremost figure it shows how the grease and oils are being added to the environment as you can see here uh, if you observe the legs more closely it contains like heavy oil kind of heavy amount of oil layer so as you can see when these things are added to the environment excessively it's not good to the environment and this is a marshy land my dear children within the marshy land you know that there are different kinds of organisms who are living so when these marshy lands are going to decompose okay uh, my, my, hydrocarbons are getting added to the environment so this is the way of adding adding hydrocarbons to the environment right then then the next type the emission of greenhouse gases emission of greenhouse gases so there are different kinds of greenhouse gases like methane carbon dioxide water vapor and so on so within this part we'll be studying about the greenhouse effect mainly okay the greenhouse effect so you are given with a point here let's see the temperature of the earth is fixed by a steady state balance between the energy received from the sun and the energy radiated back by the earth so as you can see here within the figure you know that each and every surface is going to absorb some amount of radiation or else waves okay and some amount of radiation or else waves are being reflected back okay this is how any kind of a surface is going to work so here the sun is going to provide radiation like ultraviolet rays some amount of x rays then visible light microwaves and so on okay so these waves will fall on the earth surface some amount is getting absorbed by the surface of the earth while most of them is getting radiated back okay like this the light rays will come and hit the planet earth and will radiate once more not only the light but also other kinds of waves like uv then uh, microwaves and so on okay then the other thing is that this process is very important to keep the balance and a stable temperature within the planet earth so it helps to keep a stable temperature within the planet earth my dear children if none of the if none of these if none of these waves like light and heat waves been absorbed by the planet earth then we won't be able to survive on the planet earth okay heat waves which are coming from the planet earth the planet earth if those things are not going to uh, you know like do like this if, if those waves are not going to behave like this like this then what will happen then my dear children we won't be able to survive in planet earth because it helps to maintain a proper climatic situation around our planet earth okay it helps to keep the optimum temperature in the planet earth so this effect is very important for the survival of planet earth because it helps to keep the 
temperature steady. Okay. Then carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, ozone and CFC absorb radiation given out from the earth and some of it re-radiates back, re-radiates back to earth's surface. This re-radiation helps to warm the earth and maintains a climate that will support life. So it is given as a special point because my dear children it is special. See. So this re-radiation helps to warm the earth and maintains a climate that will support the life. This is called greenhouse effect and these gases are called greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, ozone, CFC. You know that these light waves or the radiation which is getting radiated back right which is getting radiated back or reflected back these types of gases like carbon dioxide water vapor methane ozone and cfc right that means chlorofluorocarbon cfc these gases has the ability to absorb radiation which is reflected back away right to a certain direction and when there are like more amount of greenhouse gases it behaves as a shield like this so what will happen here my dear children the light rays will not or the waves will not travel like this. It will come and hit like this and it will re-radiate like this several times. That means my dear children, the heat waves or the radiation will not escape back to the space and they will retain within the earth creating a suitable environment so that we can live on. This process is very important because earth itself will not have the ability, right, earth itself. Earth itself will not have the ability to absorb each and every amount of heat energy needed for the survival of organisms. So therefore, these greenhouse gases are very helpful, right, to absorb the rest and to keep the environment temperature in a balance and a steady position, okay. So you know that our environment temperature is around 27 degrees of Celsius. It, the 37, 27 degrees of Celsius, the environment temperature that comes thanks to the greenhouse effect. If there is no greenhouse effect, my dear children, then light rays will come and hit and travel away once more. Then the temperature will not go like up to 27 degrees of Celsius, which is the normal room temperature. It will go even more, even less than that. So that means we won't be able to survive. So these greenhouse gases are acting as a shield, okay. So these gases helps to re-radiate these waves once again towards the earth's surface, okay. Then here it is given, this re-radiation helps to warm the earth and maintains a climate that will support the life. This radiation is very important my dear children. This radiation is the one which is helpful to keep the environment in a balanced steady temperature, right? This is called the greenhouse effect and, the, and these gases are called as the greenhouse gases. So this effect is the greenhouse effect, my dear children. This, re, uh, this re radiation is the greenhouse effect and the gases which are being used are the ones which referred to as greenhouse gases. 
So gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, ozone and CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. These things are referred as, right, these things are referred as greenhouse gases. This effect is, this effect or the re-radiation is referred to as the greenhouse effect, okay. Right, then types of greenhouse gases, different kinds of greenhouse gases. First one, carbon dioxide. CO2, sulfur dioxide, SO2, oxides of nitrogen, that means nitrous oxide, NO, N2O, NO2, right, these things, these things can be considered as, okay, different kinds of oxides of nitrogen can be considered as greenhouse gases, next one. Methane, we discussed about the methane, right? Next one, chlorofluorocarbon, CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. Next one, water vapor, H2O. Even water vapor can absorb, right? Even the water vapor can also absorb these solar radiation and re-radiate back to the earth surface, okay? So all of these things are considered as greenhouse gases. Greenhouse, gas, greenhouse gases are important, my dear children. There should be some amount of greenhouse gases in our environment. Otherwise, we won't be able to survive in the environment because greenhouse, thanks to greenhouse gases, we have the ability to survive in the planet Earth because it helps to keep the optimum temperature around our Earth. However, if there are excessive emission of greenhouse gases, then what will happen? More than the needful amount, if there are greenhouse gases, then, then what will happen is this radiation, right? This re radiation will get increased. So, upon increase in the re radiation, my dear children, what will happen, right? Because of increase in the re radiation, the people will not be able to survive in the planet Earth. Not only the people, but also other types of organisms as well. What is the reason for it? Because if the re radiation, will increase then the environment temperature will also increased it's like a like it will become like an oven where the heat waves are not getting escaped from the inside so we will be we will be uh, we will get like baked over here right we will get baked over here because of the heat waves given out through the greenhouse effect the, if there are more amount of greenhouse gases in the environment, then the light rays which are or light or the heat waves or in simple we can say radiation. So radiation which is going to hit the planet earth will not be able to go and escape outside. Because the gases, the greenhouse gases will re-radiate these things back, 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 uh, back, back forth once again and again and again okay so that means the environment temperature is going to increase from time to time that is what has happened right now at present we are experiencing that thing there are huge amount of greenhouse gases that we are going to explain uh, ex expel to the environment within a certain year or within a certain time period because of that what will happen large amount of greenhouse gases are getting collected to the environment in that case, my dear children, what will happen? Day by day, the temperature, the global temperature is going to increase because of the excessive amount of green, greenhouse effect. So this is pretty much, right? This is pretty much, this is going to destroy pretty much of organisms near in the future. Right now we are experiencing it up to a certain level, right? Other than that, there are different other kinds of ill effects of uh, greenhouse gases as well so we'll be discussing all those things in detail right so this is my dear children what do you mean by the greenhouse gases so greenhouse effect and greenhouse gases are important but the thing is that if they are uh, excessive then that is going to be a trouble so here it is given due to emission of greenhouse gases enormously global warming increases so the other thing is that 
enormous right emission of greenhouse gases enormous enormous means in heavy amount huge amount of release of greenhouse gases will definitely increase the global warming so like i said i told you what will have what do you mean by the global warming right increase of environmental temperature the global temperature in our planet earth so due to emission of greenhouse gases enormously global warming increases so then here given you ways by which greenhouse gases released to the environment are release of carbon dioxide due to excessive combustion of fossil fuel you know that carbon dioxide that's the first and foremost type of greenhouse gas given so release of carbon dioxide due to excessive combustion of fossil fuel is going to be a reason right this is a main reason because carbon the more amount of carbon dioxide is given now to the environment more amount of carbon dioxide so this is going to be a reason right for the greenhouse effect okay so excessive amount of carbon dioxide will increase the greenhouse effect and it will create the global warming next one release of methane ch4 right due to anaerobic uh, anaerobic decomposition of dead plant and animal matter in the marshy lands and garbage so this is some kind of a natural one right release of methane gas to anaerobic decomposition of a dead plant and animal matter in marshy lands and garbage garbage is somewhat different right it's an artificial we can come uh, we can take that one as an artificial one but however when you take the release of methane gas due to anaerobic decomposition of dead plant and animal materials ah now that can be taken as a natural process okay however you know that uh this particular incident right this particular incident okay it is somewhat related to the uh, carbon cycle somewhat related to the carbon cycle i mean like the gases which are given out related uh, uh, gases which are given out by the decomposition process is getting reabsorbed by the plants now okay sometimes my dear children these gases which are been which are getting decom uh, which are getting expelled to the environment are naturally getting converted into other different kinds of substances okay so therefore my dear children this can be up to a certain level can be considered as a uh, up to a certain level can be considered as a normal natural factor and it, it will not contribute in the environment pollution but however the garbage is going to do different kinds of other kinds of uh, issues it's, those things are going to create different other kinds of issues here garbage okay so different kinds of garbage decomposable garbage when these things are di disposed to the environment what will happen different kinds of gases are going to expel in heavy amounts you know that the amount of people or amount of uh, organisms that is going to die on a particular year right that thing the the amount that amount is somewhat you know like lesser when you compare it with the other types of or other forms of waste which the uh, greenhouse gases are going to emit so very less amount of greenhouse gases are going to emit during this process my dear children however if more amount of garbage is getting collected in the environment ah then my dear children what will happen more amount of methane gas will emit okay so it's very important to reduce the disposal of garbage to the environment okay and also it's very important to minimize the emission of carbon dioxide to the environment okay both the things are very important so this is the greenhouse effect my dear children right then the next one given the accumulation of heavy metals in the environment so like i said when i was starting the lesson part i told you about the heavy metals and we I, and i told you that we are going to discuss in detail about the heavy metals and their side effects right and the ill effects given now to the environment so accumulation of different kinds of heavy metals is also going to be a heavy problem or a very a huge problem for the environmental conditions and for the survival of the biosphere now we are going to investigate about those side effects and what are these things are referred to as heavy metals right 
the metals with high density and high relative molecular mass are called heavy metals so like i said materials or metals that has a very high density metals very that has a very high density and metals which has a very high mass relative molecular mass okay relative atomic mass is the correct one over here right but however we know that we can apply relative molecular mass as well because most of the times my dear children these things are getting uh, disposed to as compounds so therefore relative atomic mass or, or else molecular mass both the things are correct so if a certain substance has a heavy mass heavy relative atomic mass then that kind of a substance that kind of a metal in here especially are referred to as right a heavy metal this is referred to as a heavy metal so heavy metal is a metal that has a very high density in order to have very high density the relative molecular mass should be very high then discard metal items instruments and parts of vehicles that contain heavy metals accumulate in the environment some heavy metals are naturally present in the soil of some areas so sometimes my dear children these heavy metals are naturally found in the soil okay there sometimes but in very less quantity will but in very less quantities okay not in heavy quantities heavy quantities of heavy metals are getting exposed to the environment because of the human activities my dear children right humans are the ones which are mainly responsible in releasing heavy metals to the environment what is the ill effect of heavy metals then these heavy metals have the ability to collect along the food chains so they will get accumulated within the bodies of organisms the other thing is that if these heavy metals are uh, retained if these heavy metals are being obtained from external to the body of an organism the heavy metals will be directly trapped within the kidneys and livers damage in the organ system as they are heavy they are getting trapped within those structures okay so because of that organ systems will get failure right will get failed and failures of organ systems will also create different health problems in human beings and as well as other organisms right especially in animals so types of heavy metals are given mercury arsenic chromium cadmium lead copper manganese zinc so these substances are referred to as heavy metals why is that because they have a high density and a greater relative atomic mass okay so therefore these things are heavy metals so as you can see within the figure soil containing heavy metals is given as you can see you can directly observe the color is very different okay the color is actually like uh, it has a rust color of the rust it has the color of iron rust see it has the brownish yellow color iron rust nature so it's because this uh, this soil contains large amount of heavy metals my dear children okay so this is the soil containing heavy metals these are the examples for different kinds of heavy metals right then so methods by which the heavy metals release to the environment now we discuss about the heavy metals okay and we discuss the definition for heavy metals now it's time to discuss what are the method different kinds of methods which the heavy metals are being added to the environment so under that you are given with several points let's see release of industrial waste waste of zinc mines electroplating and cadmium release during the production of orange color pigments so mainly these substances are getting released by the release of industrial waste my dear children you know that there are different kinds of industries so these industries utilize different kinds of metals when you take the jewelry industry you know that copper is being utilized and also during the electroplating process sometimes uh, zinc is being utilized you know that zinc is used to do uh, zinc, zinc is used to galvanization so we use electroplating to do galvanization so my dear children in there we use zinc okay so zinc can be released to the environment by the electroplating process or by the galvanization process so there can be different kinds of industries industries which carry out the 
galvanizing so due from these industries zinc is being added to the environment okay so like that time my dear children zinc is added by the zinc mines also from my zinc mines also during the process of extraction zinc can add to the environment then electroplating so like i said about the electroplating right and cadmium released to the, the cadmium released during the production of orange color pigments so cadmium has a unique orange color cadmium is used to create orange color pigments so during the creation of orange color pigments industrially there is a possibility to release cadmium to the environment so you have learned that cadmium is a heavy metal okay so this is the first way by the industries mainly next one due to excessive usage of agrochemicals arsenic is released to environment due to excessive use of high uh, due, to due to excessive use of agrochemicals okay that means chemical fertilizer right and pesticides these things contain arsenic which is a poisonous heavy metal so uh, when arsenic uh, there is a possibility that arsenic will be added to the environment or added to the soil because of excessive use of agrochemicals arsenic is very poisonous my dear children and it is also a, a terrible heavy metal right then next one release of lead from lead mix petrol lead is getting mixed with petrol in sometimes so during the burning of lead mix petrol lead can be added to the environment as a by product ne next one due to excessive usage of coal this card of damaged thermometers barometers cfl bulbs paints used to apply on ships and industrial waste release mercury then how the mercury is getting released you know that most of the thermometers that we used in our day to day life are now thermo uh, mercury thermometers okay most of the thermometers that we use in our day to day life are mercury thermometers so when you take mercury thermometers my dear children the name itself refers to mercury thermometer so these things use mercury right these things use mercury other than that there are barometers right there are barometers mercury barometers which are used to measure the atmospheric pressure right so barometers then my dear children thermometers cfl bulbs if you take cfl bulbs the inner layer of cfl bulb is painted with mercury layer okay in order to get a good brightness so mercury is also present in cfl bulbs as well so discards discarding of these damaged thermometers barometers cfl bulbs and my dear children other thing is some paints in some paints also we use mercury right which i apply on ship i uh, and these industrial waste or these kinds of waste will release mercury to the environment okay so these kinds of waste if you re remove these waste to the environment definitely mercury will added to the environment that is why my dear children you have been advised to not to throw these kinds of bulbs to the environment especially cfl bulbs because these things will add mercury the heavy metal to the environment okay then the next one chromium is released by paints cement paper and rubber chromium is used as a pigment to color them so the chrome color right chrome color chrome color can be identified in some bathware items okay this chrome color is actually obtained from the special metal called chromium it has a unique shiny silver color nature the shine is very high okay it has a very high glitter right it is it is very uh, it is very glitter the glitterness is very high the shiny nature the lustrous nature is very high in chromium and also it is in silver color my dear children so chromium is used to produce these kinds of pigments different kinds of silver color pigments so chromium can be added to the environment when disposing these paints with 
pigments, chromium pigments. And also if you are removing these substances, these materials to the environment that has core chromium, then chromium can be added to the environment as a heavy metal, right? Other than that, my dear children, it will release from cement, paper and also from rubber, okay? Right then. So you are given with an assignment then. What is the assignment? List out the, list out the materials and appliances that are utilized at home. Discuss the ill effects caused by the different types of heavy metals in them. So list out the materials and appliances that is utilized at home. Discuss the ill effects of ill effects caused by the different types of heavy metals in them. So you know that even we discuss these things like in the earlier times. Can you remember if you take CFL bulbs, an instrument that we use, an instrument that we used in our domestic life contains mercury as a heavy metal. If you take a heater, contains copper as a heavy metal. If you take conducting wires, contains copper as a heavy metal. Okay. Now you need to find out different kinds of ill effects given out by these kinds of heavy metals. Okay. So it's your responsibility, my dear children. I'm not going to do these things because this is these, these things are very easy. Try to find out the ill effects of heavy metals carried out by those the instruments and are those kinds of waste substances. It's very important to follow up these things, my dear children. It's very important to do these assignments. So I hope that you will do the assignment at home. Okay. Right, my dear children. So we have studied several things regarding to the in, uh, environment pollution. So we discuss how the environment pollution is mainly going to happen. So we discussed that the uh, environment pollution is mainly going to happen because of different kinds of adding of the different kinds of waste materials to the environment. Under that we discussed several kinds of waste materials which are being added to the environment by the human uh, population. Mainly from the human population. Okay. And uh, we discussed about the greenhouse gases. Okay. We discussed about the uh, heavy metals. Okay. And my dear children, we discussed about one particular type of a biogeochemical cycle, which is the nitrogen cycle. Okay. So those are the things that we have learned within this chapter. Okay. Within this chapter, we have discussed mainly focused about the biogeochemical cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and about the different kinds of effluents added to the environment by the human population. And my dear children, we discussed about the ill effects created because of adding these waste substances to the environment. So these are the things which we have learned mainly within this chapter. So with that one, my dear children, I'm going to finish up this, uh, this chapter. So within next chapter, we'll be discussing the other ways of environmental pollution. Especially we'll be discussing about particulate matter and so on. When you go further with the lesson, you will study about each and every waste material given out by the human, uh, human population to the environment. Okay. And we'll be discussing about the ill effects created by these each and every waste material. Okay. Right then. However, my dear children, I'm going to finish up this chapter with the end of this one. So it's important to follow up these assignments at, at your home, my dear children. So in the next chapter, we'll be discussing the uh, effects of environment pollution and also the other types of waste materials which are being added to the environment which supports the environment pollution okay however we'll be discussing those things in our next chapter to watch these important lessons subscribe to dp education's youtube channel right now click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons sri lanka's largest free online school dp education